Let's start with the obvious. If you are watching this, you are probably a human. And as a human, you have likely been told that you are part of the smartest species on Earth. Congratulations. But how do we actually know that? Did someone hand us a trophy for best brain? Was there an inner species IQ test we somehow aced while dolphins and chimpanzees bombed the math section? The truth is the idea that humans are the smartest is both true and a little more complicated than we like to admit. What does smart even mean? When we say smart, we usually mean things like solving problems, inventing tools, planning for the future, or building entire civilizations. By that definition, humans crush it. We build skyscrapers, write symphonies, send probes to Mars, and somehow figured out how to deep fry Oreos. But intelligence is not one size fits all. Think about it. If you drop me in the middle of the ocean with no boat, I will be shark food in under 10 minutes. Drop a dolphin in the same spot, and it is basically a luxury cruise. So are dolphins smarter than us in the water? Absolutely. Does that make them the overall smartest? Not necessarily, it just means they are specialized geniuses in their environment. Our big claim to fame is our brain. Relative to our body size, it is huge, about 3 pounds of squishy gray matter packed with roughly 86 billion neurons. And unlike most animals, we have an extraordinary prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain that handles planning, reasoning, and imagining the future. That is the mental real estate that let us go from banging rocks together to building rocket ships. We are also social in a way that supercharges intelligence. Alone an average human is okay. But put a bunch of us together and we invent language trade laws and memes. We build on each other's knowledge so that your smartphone is not just your invention, it is the product of centuries of human collaboration. Try explaining that to an orangutan, and it will probably just take your banana and walk away. One of the big arguments for human superiority is tool use. But here's the thing, we are not the only species with gadgets. Chimpanzees use sticks to fish termites out of mounds. Crows bend wires into hooks to pull food out of tubes. Sea otters use rocks to crack open clams. And octopuses, yes, octopuses carry coconut shells around to use as portable shelters. If that is not ingenuity, I do not know what is. The difference is scale and complexity. We build nuclear reactors and self-driving cars. They build clam openers. But the fact that multiple species have independently invented tools suggests intelligence is not a human monopoly. It is a spectrum. Humans have language complex, symbolic, and infinitely flexible. We can gossip, write novels, and explain quantum physics over coffee. But some animals have communication systems that while different are shockingly sophisticated. Take dolphins. They have signature whistles, basically names, and can remember other dolphins' names for decades. Elephants communicate with low-frequency rumbles that travel miles. Bees do a waggle dance to tell their hive where food is. It is like the animal version of Google Maps. And then there is memory. Clark's nutcrackers. Little gray birds can hide tens of thousands of seeds and remember where they put them months later. Meanwhile, I still forget why I walked into the kitchen. Problem-solving skills in the wild. If you measure intelligence by the ability to solve problems, problems in novel ways, plenty of species score high. Crows can solve multi-step puzzles that require planning ahead. Rats can navigate complex mazes and even adapt when the rules change. Some octopuses have been caught escaping aquariums through tiny holes to raid neighboring tanks for food, like criminal masterminds with suction cups. The point problem-solving is everywhere in the animal kingdom, but humans have taken it to an extreme building entire problem-solving machines, aka computers, to solve problems we made up ourselves. One famous experiment is the mirror test where scientists put a mark on an animal and see if it recognizes the mark on itself in a mirror. Passing the test suggests self-awareness knowing that's me, and not just that's another animal. Humans pass it, of course, but so do dolphins, elephants, magpies, and great apes. That means they have at least some level of, hey, that's me thinking. But before we get too smug, keep in mind some human toddlers fail the test until around age two. So in those early years, your toddler is about as self-aware as a pigeon. So if all these animals are smart in their own way, why do humans still get called the most intelligent species? Three big reasons. Reasons. Abstract thinking. We can imagine things that do not exist yet. Complex cooperation. We can work in massive groups toward a shared goal even if we do not know each other personally. Try getting a thousand cats to cooperate. Cumulative culture. We pass knowledge down building on it over generations. An iPhone is not the product of one genius. It is millions of tiny innovations stacked together. These skills let us reshape the planet. Whether that is good or bad, well, that is a different debate. But are we always the smartest in the room? Here is the twist. The smartest does not mean being the best at everything. If you judge by memory, some birds win. If you judge by navigation, migrating animals blow us out of the water. If you judge by pure strength, well, even a chimpanzee could toss me like a ragdoll. Humans are generalists. We are good enough at enough things to dominate most environments. But specialized intelligence like a bat's echolocation or a spider's web building shows that other creatures are unmatched in their niches. And that brings us to the bigger question. If intelligence is not one size fits all, maybe the real issue is not who is the smartest, but what kind of smart are you? And that is where things get interesting. 
let's start with navigation. You and I need Google Maps to find a coffee shop three blocks away. Meanwhile, the Arctic Tern. This little seabird flies from the Arctic to Antarctica and back every single year. No maps, no compass, no frequent flyer miles, just an internal GPS that makes our technology look like a toddler's etch-a-sketch. Or take memory. Earlier, I mentioned Clark's Nutcrackers, storing tens of thousands of seeds and remembering their hiding spots months later. Imagine remembering exactly where you parked your car for 20,000 cars in different neighborhoods without writing anything down. And then there's raw sensory power. A dog's sense of smell is so sensitive it can detect diseases like cancer before medical scans can. Bats navigate complete darkness with echolocation. Mantis shrimp. They can see colors we do not even have names for, basically living in an acid trip version of reality. While we are stuck with our boring old rainbow, these abilities are not accidents. They are the result of millions of years of evolution fine-tuning brains for specific jobs. That's the thing animals don't need to be good at everything. They only need to be extraordinary at what matters for survival in their niche. Humans, on the other hand, are the Swiss army knives of intelligence. We can do a lot of things reasonably well, and our ultimate trick is that we can change our environment instead of changing ourselves to fit it. Penguins evolved to survive the cold. We invented parkas and central heating. The elephant in the room. Literally, elephants are a perfect example of how different intelligence can be just as impressive. They mourn their dead, recognize themselves in mirrors, use tools, and can remember water sources from decades ago. And then we have the octopus, which is basically an alien that accidentally evolved in Earth's oceans. With their problem-solving skills, shape-shifting bodies, and ability to open jars from the inside, octopuses are rewriting what we think intelligence looks like. Their brains are decentralized, two-thirds of their neurons are in their arms, meaning each arm can think independently. The catch. They live only a few years. If octopuses had human lifespans, who knows what they'd come up with? Probably an underwater version of TikTok. One big reason humans seem so far ahead is technology. Without it, we're just clever primates with mediocre sprint speed and laughable claws. But give us tools, and we can do anything from split atoms to live stream a cat wearing sunglasses. Technology also changes how we measure intelligence. Our tools make us appear smarter because they extend our abilities far beyond our biological limits. But here's the uncomfortable question. If all our tech disappeared tomorrow, how smart would we really be? We've now built machines that can outthink us in narrow tasks. AI can beat chess grandmasters, translate languages in seconds, and predict protein structures things that would take humans years or even centuries. But here's the key. These AIs are narrow specialists. In that sense, AI is like the animal kingdom brilliant in its lane, clueless outside of it. The difference is that AI is evolving at human speed, not evolutionary speed, and it raises the possibility that one day humans might not be the smartest beings on the planet, at least in certain areas. Another twist intelligence is not just about neurons. It's also about culture cooperation and adaptability. Ant colonies, for example, can solve complex problems collectively, like finding the shortest path to food without any single ant having a master plan. It's a form of swarm intelligence that's eerily similar to how internet communities solve problems. Humans do this too, but on steroids. Our ability to pool knowledge across time and space is unmatched. You don't have to invent fire from scratch, you can Google it. Which side note is a hilarious sentence if you think about it. Intelligence is not a ladder with humans at the top. It's a web with different species excelling in different ways. We're amazing in ours just as others are in theirs. Recognizing that doesn't make us less special. It makes the world more fascinating. Because the real mark of intelligence might not be how high you rank, but how well you appreciate the intelligence around you. And if we can do that, maybe we'll prove we're not just the smartest species, but also the wisest.